Okay, so let's talk about the final season of Atlanta, which is finally here on FX. Let's talk about it. We just got the first two episodes and that they hit hard. So definitely go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you know when these videos drop. But we're going to be breaking them down just as we did in the previous season, which I know a lot of people weren't really a fan of the previous season. I did enjoy it and I did like it. So yeah, go check those out if you want. But let's talk about season four, episode one right now, which starts off right off with something i think we all remember clearly happening and that is a woman in a wheelchair with a knife well not a wheelchair it's one of those electric scooters right with a knife trying to stop people from taking things from a target um, this was happening during the riots back in 2020 and this is actually a true story I don't know if you were on TikTok or Twitter, wherever you saw it, there was a woman who was actually trying to sort of save Target for some reason while all this is happening, and she was just holding a knife trying to get people to leave the things that they were taking from the store, and I think that it was just hilarious that Atlanta brought this here. So Darius goes into the store that is sort of being like all chaotic, and the guy who's here behind the register is like, what are you doing here? What are you trying to do? And Terry's is like, yeah, I got this as a gift. It's an air fryer. I'm trying to return it. And, you know, I don't want it. So I'm trying to see if I can get some money. The cashier is just like, what do you mean? You see everything around you happening and you're here trying to do a return. Nah, I'm, I'm not going to do this. The cashier then takes the money and leaves. Darius is like, I guess I'll keep this for now. And a woman is at the door. She's in a motorized scooter and she's telling people to put all the things back that she wants them to stop doing what they're doing. And everybody's like, can you like get out of the way? Like, just stop, please. Just stop. And then she somehow singles out Darius and is like, you did not pay for that. That's not yours. And he's like, this is mine. I brought it to return, but I can't return it. So I'm taking it back. She then pulls out a knife and starts chasing Darius around and we just started Atlanta with this. So this is definitely a way to start it. But like I said, this is something that truly did happen. You can look it up. I think people on Twitter have been talking about it as well on the episode uh, today. So definitely hilarious they brought this in here. Then we get into our story where we see that Al has been stuck in traffic and that's the reason that Darius thought it'd be good to go and try to make this return. Of course, he couldn't make the return and here he is. But through the window and through a mirror, he sees that the woman is still chasing him and still trying to get to him. Now, the traffic is at a standstill. So, of course, Darius needs to get up and leave because this woman's almost about to come here and stab him. We see then that Al is thinking about Blue Blood, one of his favorite rappers who apparently has just died. And he had been dead for some time now, according to the radio, but they just announced it. During all of this, he finds out that there's actually a scavenger hunt going around with Blue Blood, and he's trying to figure out what it is. While he's doing that, Darius is running from the Karen with the knife. We have Van and Ern who are stuck in Atlanta Station and they're actually running through all of their exes here for some apparent reason. And it's sort of like a Twilight Zone feel to it because one of the exes is like, I think I've been here as long as Now You See Me's been in theaters. Now You See Me too, which doesn't make it any better by the way because it's been a long time since that came out. Van and Ern are like, yeah, we got to get out of here some way or another. They find this emergency exit and they go through it. It's all dark and we don't know where they're going to come out from. We then see that Darius is still also being chased by the Karen and the Karen's like, I'm never going to stop. I'm going to keep following you because you need to put that back, basically. All of this happening as well. We have Al who is doing the scavenger hunt and eventually and gets to Blue Blood's funeral where he is being kept and his wife is there and she pretty much explains that he was sort of always trying to do things for the culture, trying to do as much as he could for the fans and just trying to leave this final gift for them. And in that process, maybe he sort of missed out on life himself, not really having fun and all of that. And this sort of starts hitting home to Al as well because he's sort of been in that position where he sort of feels maybe he's doing all of these things and at the same time how important will they really be once he's gone we'll talk more about that in a bit so we finally see that van and urn come out of the next door and they are now in blue blood's funeral as well and we see darius as well show up there and also urn's ex shows up there as well she finally made it out of atlanta station 
We then have the gang leave in the car. They ask the ex if she needs a ride, and she's like, nah, you know what? I, my Uber's almost here. It's going to be okay. Darius has now given her the air fry because she still needed a gift for her father, and he's like, this will be good for him. Just take it. And then she's just there alone in the empty parking lot, and then we hear the noise. The motorized vehicle right behind her The Karen has caught up, and that was just just like scary i can't even talk about it so let's talk about this episode and everything we saw from it so i think that definitely one of the most i think like impactful parts of it all definitely has to be this whole thing with um al and blue blood i think this whole story has been always about al and we've always gotten this emotional like episodes with him this one was kind of teetering on that emotional aspect but also felt dreamy esque in a way which i did enjoy here because i don't know exactly what was reality what wasn't right because how does van and Ern go through a door in atlanta station and end up in these like empty like lot that where we had blue blood's funeral right so regardless of the thing there's a lot of symbolism here i think especially with van and Ern as well i think the two of them being stuck in this sort of like atlanta station might represent how Ern feels being here in atlanta and van as well as we learned from her in the past season how she always felt that she never knew exactly who she was she always was just either the mother or the girlfriend or whatever or have you but she never knew who Van really was. And I think both of them being in the situation of feeling stuck and feeling like they can't get out of it and the familiarity of the exes is sort of that baggage that they're carrying. And who knows, maybe one to another, they are still like that ex as well that they can't seem to get away from. And I think that's sort of like them trying to like pull out the roots and sort of get out at the same time which they are able to do by going into the dark and sort of the unknown not knowing what is on the other side of it all and just taking a chance and that chance was taken together which I think is something important to note because that was sort of like you trust me I trust you we can make it out of this together and I think that sort of plays into the role for episode two which I'm just going to talk about briefly here with Ern talking about wanting to go to Los Angeles but not sure if Van will follow and Lottie and that's kind of been his whole fear and i think that whole thing with them at atlanta station is sort of maybe a little hint that van might be open to going to los angeles and taking that risk with Ern, going into the dark blind basically without anything and just taking that leap of faith so that's definitely what i got from this van and Ern situation in atlanta station now with al and the whole blue blood thing i think it was sort of a thing where he was a fan of blue blood and he was very much so intrigued to do the scavenger hunt but at the same time a distraction from himself of where he is going himself into his career we know he is at a pivoting point where he really has something that could definitely catapult him further or this could be definitely the peak of his career and the end of it and i think he's sort of thinking about what legacy will i leave behind once i'm gone and he sees what happened with blue blood we saw that the funeral all of that that happened was pretty much just a finite feeling of once this is over it's over and what do you have to tell nothing yourself but what do the people that you leave behind tell about you because your fans might be there but are they really listening to you because most people that came out to the funeral it wasn't as much as blue blood himself thought were there to listen to him and so were these people really fans of him who claim to be fans if they didn't listen to the album and hear his messages about how to come to this funeral because the wife says that only like five people showed up to it so it was pretty much that blue blood thought that his fans were really there for him but most of the time a lot of people will say that they listen to an artist or they do something just for the clout and that's pretty much I think what they were trying to say with this episode in Blue Blood's funeral that most people who were claiming to be fans weren't really fans because if they were they would have listened to the whole album and know where this funeral was taking place but alas not many people showed up to it so I think it's really interesting to have um, Al sort of think about these situations as well and really have these like conversations with himself internally as well about what it is he's really doing with his music so i think that was so well done right there darius i think he definitely has been having more like altercations and confrontations with these um racists and we saw it in the 
last season as well um, with the gentrification episode. I think we see it here as well with the Karen. And that's pretty much, I think, a very impactful way to show it here, especially with real life situations that did happen back again in 2020. So overall, I thought that this was a great episode, really having these three stories interweave together towards the end while they were being separated at the beginning, I think was a great way to culminate the episode as well. And that Karen with the knife, I'm telling you, that Karen with the knife, I'm going to be scared of that for sure. Um, but let me know your thoughts and opinions on the episode. We'll talk about episode two as well right after this. So the video should be going up by the time you're watching this. But yeah, these episodes came out kind of late for me. So I had to record them and then my camera didn't have battery i had to like charge that up real quick so it's been a mess and then my pearl videos today messed up so many times and i'm just re-uploading one right now because it messed up as well so messy day but we're gonna get the videos done i love doing the videos and i love you for watching them as well go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't hit that notification bell we're closing in on 25,000 subscribers once we get there we will do a giveaway so don't miss out on that but as always, I'll see all of you next time. Thank you for tuning in. And as always, stay safe, stay positive. By the way, make sure you check out our website, CultureLixer.com, as well as our Twitter, at CultureLixer, and our TikTok is at CultureLixer. But as always, stay safe, stay positive.